Well, Rich, here we are again, warbling. I think you'll find that this is episode 11. Episode 11. 11, 11. Excellent. So we're getting beyond the 10 mark. We're moving on. And hopefully we've still got some listeners and viewers to make well, the most of the warblings. As, as we mentioned last week, we've had a thousand hours of, uh, of viewing and listening. So again, thank you to all our our, uh, our listeners and viewers out there for, for putting up with our warbles. But um, so <laughs> another interesting warble this week. I, I reckon you've been talking to one of your clients this week, have you? Yeah, we have. We're back up in uh, Salisbury, uh, head office, MG Cannon. Uh, Robert Snook, um, one of the directors of MG Cannon, a, a body shop um, a business, so repair accident damage. Um, and they work closely with a lot of the... Uh, the manufacturers, uh, but they also do private work as well, um, and they are based around the southwest. So um, they've um, uh, Robert will explain a little bit now when we when we, when we start hearing uh, the interview a little bit more about the business. So uh, I won't say too much, but really great to get some insight into business that's been back reopen for a number of weeks now, just to understand what's been going on, how they've been getting on with the new processes, etc. So we will take. A few moments to listen to Robert um, talking and warbling with me um, about MG Cannon and their body shop business. Great, let's hear it. Hello and uh, welcome to our podcast. And uh, today I'm delighted to welcome Robert Snook of MG Cannon. Robert, if you could just take uh, one minute just to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about uh, your organisation. Yeah, thank you, Richard. Good morning, everyone. Um, MG Cannon is a vehicle accident repair centre. We're long established, we've been trading for around 70 years now, and our hometown is Salisbury. Uh, recently we've expanded outside of Salisbury into uh, other locations, and today we operate from 10 sites around the southwest, including Gloucester, Bristol, Swindon, Westbury, two sites in Salisbury, Dorchester and Plymouth, and Paul in Dorset. Uh, today we employ 155 staff across those 10 sites, and MG Cannon has become known as the manufacturer's choice of accident repair centre for people who want their BMW repaired by a BMW approved centre or Tesla or Mercedes or Peugeot or Vauxhall or whatever brand of car they drive. We're approved by 37 vehicle manufacturers now and the nominated body shop for more than 100 car dealerships that again want quality for their customers and to maintain warranty and safety and things like that fully conversant with latest ADAS and electric and hybrid vehicle technology. Our technicians receive training directly from the manufacturers on these things. All of that together has led us to become a UK body shop of the year now six times over recent years. And uh, it's really tan tantamount to the success of the team and the commitment they have to looking after our fantastic customers. Great, fantastic! Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it's um, it, it's uh, it sounds like you've had a, a very successful track record in what we might call the old world. So it'd be really interesting today just to learn a little bit more about how you you went about planning uh, and communicating those changes that now come into place. Because um, I, I believe you've you've had the opportunity to open up some of your sites um, since the eighteenth of May. So the first uh, piece that we'd like to discuss today is. Is around that planning. How, how did you or what did you do to go about getting ready for the opening of, of those sites that are already open and, and I believe there's other ones that are opening soon as well so if you could give us some insights into that that'd be fantastic. Yeah we, we went into lockdown on the close of business on the 24th of March the day after the, the Prime Minister's original announcement. Um, while motor vehicle repair shops were, were seen as able to reopen as classed as essential businesses we took the view that it's about doing what's right and, and about social responsibility, really. So we contacted all of our customers, our suppliers, our business partners, and explained our plans to, to close. And at that point, the directors really went to work. This, this is why we are on the payroll in our business, to manage situations like this. When it's all going along lovely, then the world's lovely and fluffy and great, but it's times like this when we needed strong leadership and to start our plans to reopen from that point onwards not to just go back to the, the house and the garden and, and leave it till later. So we started off immediately with daily director Zoom calls. We have Zoom calls with the directors every morning at nine o'clock in the morning. And the first sort of conversations were, were very much around things like, you know, this is some obstacle, but aren't obstacles just opportunities in disguise here? 
you know, COVID, if we can get this planning period right of work hard and diligently during lockdown, there are actually opportunities for us to go and achieve things as a business potentially that we may never have done without COVID. We would have just gone along doing the same old, same old, old world stuff. And we very much saw that, that if we could get some, some good work done in that planning phase while we're in lockdown, that, that, like I said, we could go on and achieve some things that we probably would never have achieved. And, you know, align the business to the new world, really get involved with this digital transformation that's going on in our lives and what that would mean for us. And yeah, we saw yeah. an opportunity to accelerate those plans um, for the business greatly because of COVID. We saw the opportunity in that. Fantastic, fantastic, and and in and in terms of um, those or those sites that are already opened, um, how how have you how have you found the last few weeks in terms of the customer um, side of things? What's the, the feeling or the sentiment that you've been picking up from from the customers? Uh, customers have been absolutely fabulous, and if any of our customers uh, listen to this podcast, I would just like to say a personal thank you to you. Your support has been absolutely overwhelming, and. Um, the customers really appreciated communication, Richard. You know, you can imagine that, that no matter what that type of car you drive or what the value of that car is, it all has relative importance to you and your lifestyle. So for their, them to get regular communication from us, um, they were really delighted. And the key feedback from them was they were pleased to hear about the social responsibility. They were pleased to hear that we weren't putting them at risk by trying to stay open and compromising their safety. Uh, we have had lots of feedback from customers during lockdown about how they've been on our website and seen our social media and our e-newsletters that we've been sending them every week. They're saying how you know they, they're good to see that we have the PPE in place, that we have social distancing in place, that we're valuing our staff. A lot of the customers have commented more about how we seem to be valuing our staff as much as looking after their car. They, they really appreciate it. I think um, you know social responsibility as a as a company is. As, as really resonated with our customers. They really appreciated that if we have that sort of attitude, then we're probably going to look after their car and make a great job of the repair of it. So very yeah. positive, very positive all around in some way. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a really interesting one, isn't it? It's, all, it's almost that sort of pay, pay forward um, mentality, the idea of, of doing the great things now that are valued by people and not necessarily purely based on uh, the commercials um, so uh, and that lands really well with with everybody and I, I think that's something that's really interesting about where we find ourselves at the moment we're all in the same boat there is no difference we're all uh, un, under the same cosh as it were um, so so I think the understanding that comes through is really interesting you mentioned your team um, there and, and said that you know that you, you're focusing a, a lot in terms of those uh, their side of things um, how, how does the communication work for, for you with, with the teams? Uh, it works very well. Again, coming back, just to start the answer to that one, Richard, it came back to us realising as a team of directors that, that this is when you find out as an employee who you really do work for. This is where you find out as a business what your culture is really like and whether all those motivational posters and mission statements and objectives that they're all up in our offices and receptions of multiple different businesses around the UK. You find out in these days whether any of that means a real job at all about looking after your staff. So we started asking our questions about what was the alternative because without our staff, what is our business anyway? It's just a collection of inanimate objects, desks, computers, uh, repair equipment. None of, it, none of it has living, breathing capability. It's our staff that bring our business to life. So we, we really wanted to prioritise communicating with our staff. Um, our staff, ever since the day of lockdown, have had a daily director's update. And that has been incredibly well received and very popular to the point where many of our staff have replied saying they've stopped watching the news now because the director's update contains all the news that's relevant to them and none of the, the things that aren't. Um, they like the fact that we give them hot and cold, good and bad news. We don't fluff it all up that it's wonderful and we don't relentlessly um, you know, demotivate them. They like the fact they hear it. We have a director's meeting in the morning, we have our activities during the day, and by six o'clock that evening, they have heard what's happened in MG Cannon that day, in some ways better than they may have heard if they were in the office or in the workshop. It's, it's yeah. something that they sort of commented on, that they actually hear more about what's going on in the company now 
sometimes than when they were busy being at work. Yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing we do that is uh, different, I think, to some companies is every Friday we send a well-being update. So that well-being update contains things like ideas to do online or at home with children or with elderly relatives or recipes or online training or any sort of activities for the weekend around how they can still keep a structure and how we can help them keep weekends special because we didn't, we didn't think it was healthy to just abandon all structure so we've encouraged them to get up at a certain time go to bed at a certain time keep special things for the weekend whether that's just your normal relaxing clothes keep things that make you feel good for the weekend so that we keep a, a structure and a positive mindset in the team and it's been it's been as i said really well received and and really has brought the team together under a 1MG Canon culture, really. That's fun, fantastic to hear because we knew, of course, we know from the experience, customer experience point of view is that, you know, you get your teams in the right place, your, your number one customers, um, uh, and they will then go out and provide that service that your customers are expecting and deserve. Um, so it's, it's really, really great to be able to hear that. So last, last, last question in terms of the future then, um, you know, where, 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 where are you, go where, where's MG at Canon going? What, 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 what does the future hold for, for you? I mean, the, the, fu <coughs> the future is, is unknown. What the only bit that's known already for all of businesses and all industries is that this is going to have a much longer tail to this crisis than was originally en envisaged. Um, for us in our planning, we're planning to not be through this crisis till the back end of next year, not this year. Okay. Um, and so we, you know, are being cautiously um, structured in our return to work. Um, we're making sure that we, you know, bring people back off furlough in a step structured way so that we are respecting the fact that cars are on site with us. People want those back, especially if they're returning to work. But accepting that you know accident volumes with the traffic on the road so reduced is way mm -hmm. down. Uh, at some points, the claims volumes for motor accidents in the UK fell to beyond ninety percent down on previous volumes. Currently operating at about sixty-five percent down in the southwest region. So we're we're planning to be here. Uh, we're planning to implement the changes that we've uh, worked on during the lockdown phase, and we've very much been keeping the staff involved in that. In terms of moving forward, we're still holding weekly Zoom calls mm -hmm. with one of our sites. And we are involving our business partners now. They are reopening in what our plan plans are. So that, again, we're aligning uh, our whole team and our whole team meaning, not just those who work for us, the people that help make MG Cannon what, it, what it's become. Fantastic. And, and it sounds like all of that going to be put in place is going to be um, ensure your, your customers continue to receive, uh, you know, the highest level of standards in terms of work and also experience that they that they have with you. So that's fantastic to hear. Thank you ever so much for your time uh, today and um, best wishes. And I will speak soon. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Bye bye. So there we go. There was Robert, Robert and my good self. Um, unfortunately, we were unable to see Robert in all his magnificent um, virtue moving uh, a bit of a, uh, but uh, we could hear everything he was saying. So um, what, did you, what did you think, Ryan? What were the, the, the key things that you, you pulled out of that? Yeah, it's a, it's a great, I thought it was a really good, no, another great, uh, another great art warble with, with, uh, with, a, with an associate. I, I think, um, although we obviously didn't see him, we could only see a sort of a, a picture of him um it was great to hear his points particularly there was, a, there was a number of things rich that really stood out for me that um that kind of back up what we've been talking about throughout this whole uh this whole warblings that we've been doing now for 11 weeks just to remind everybody um and the, the the key thing that came across was he said to me when all this happened or he said to us didn't he when all this happened um which kind of spoke volumes to me was um, the directors needed to get involved and direct. You know, they had to really take the business by the scruff of the neck um, and do the moral thing, which was was to to really steer the business um, through the you know through these these difficult uh, three three four months. And um, I, do you know, what? I was really blown away with that because you know often when businesses go into uh, stress or you know even in normal times, you often see pretty 
underhand behaviour for directors sometimes. Uh, not not in all, of course, that that casts a, a huge aspersion, I guess. But you know, some some directors bit slightly show that they don't want to take responsibility for for their actions. And there's easy places to go and blame, isn't there? But he was really clear that the business, the directors were going to get hold of it. They were really clear about dealing with the obstacles and grabbing the opportunities. And that, that massively came over, didn't it, in terms of the opportunities as he, as he saw yeah, them. It's it's really interesting one, actually. It must be a West Country mindset. It's about that opportunity, isn't it, you see? If you see an apple tree, you know you can make cider from it. So it's it's about those issues. Uh, you can have that one. Um, it's Thank about you. those that. issues that were there. And I think that, from what I've seen myself from MG Cannon, but other organisations, is the fact that there are those who have that outlook that is that positive reinforcement and it is saying yes this is happening it's acknowledging and then moving forward um, and those businesses that take a long time to acknowledge that something has changed has an impact on their customers because if you're hiding behind stuff then the customers pick up on that so you've got to sit back and we've got to say as leaders yeah okay this is happening what do we do and if we've made a mistake yeah we've made a mistake what do we now do Otherwise, mm. things won't move forward. So I thought that was mm. that was really interesting. And then, and then he mentioned about the teams, the team side of things, and, and the focus on the people. I, I thought that was very, very, very um, telling, because you know, the number one customer, as 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 we say, it are your employees. What was your what was your sort of take on that? Yeah, you just, just again, um, you know, the more and more businesses that that, that we speak to and that, that I speak to down down here, that that are focusing on their people, are really getting this whole piece around the how to delight their customers on their client journey. And it comes back to, again, you know, repeating the same thing again, but, you know, the more you repeat it, the more people get it, is the three voices of the journey, the process, which he's clearly, they clearly worked really hard on to make sure that they were looking after both their customers and their, and their people, then engaging their team in that and making sure they felt great. I, I loved his... Um, his daily director's update that he that he talks about, um, you know, because actually if I'm an employee and I'm worried about my job or I'm worried about my individual position, um, you know, the fact that I'm going to hear from the directors every day about about how things are would create huge value for me as an employee, but most importantly would make me feel great that people are bothered and they want to keep me updated and I feel part of a much bigger organisation. And of course, if your team are engaged, as we know, and we talk about every week, your customers are going to get a much, much better experience and a memory of the experience uh, in these difficult times. You know, clearly their business dropped off because there weren't many cars on the road and therefore there wasn't any accident repair. Um, so the ability to be able to spend that time working on the business and the team and all those innovative things that they've done, I thought was was real you know a real testament to, to great to having a great plan and again you know we talked about great plans and having a great plan to come out of this mm -hmm. and then the, the third thing that that sort of took me back to stuff we talked about in the past rich was this whole piece around communication communicate 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 they've done that in the right way through the right channels creating the right environment um to to keep everybody on board so yeah, I, I, I can see a, a very successful business, but he did, didn't he? He 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 flagged an air of warning. Yeah, yeah. he doesn't think that business will be back to its full strength until the you know the end of the end of next year. But I bet you, if they carry on doing what they're doing and continue to focus on their people and on their customers, you'll find that that won't be the end of next year. They're back to to where they are. They'll be back there a lot a lot more quickly. Yeah. They're the sort of organisation that do, does take the opportunity as well to check what the confidence levels are like from the customer base. So you've got to keep checking in the customer base. Everything's changing rapidly for businesses, but of course we're all customers as well and we know stuff changes really quickly. So you've got to check in with them. Um, you know, uh, something that, 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 we, that we do and we offer in terms of the customer confidence surveys. So last, um, last time our last podcast we mentioned, you know, teams, team safety um, and team motivation. Uh, surveys or checkers but you've also got to do it for the for the customers as well how confident are they with what they what they found at your organization how confident are they with the processes you put in place how confident are they to return or suggest that other people come to your business because of the interaction they had with you um, so it's a it's a really big thing i mean i've had i've had both ends of the spectrum recently taken one car into one um com company and had uh, a great experience of 
being phoned up the day before, telling me what to expect, what not to expect, stand outside, make sure I don't come in until the master come in, et cetera, et cetera. Wet wiping keys and pens and everything like that to make sure everything's sanitized. Took our other car in for an MOT um, the other day, complete opposite end. The only acknowledgement of COVID was a poster on the door saying, please respect social distancing. Oh, I tell a lie, there was a bit of tape on the floor as well. That was it. So, you know, the confidence levels of customers can be knocked by all of the things that they're actually um, interacting with, not necessarily just your business. So you've got to keep checking. So please do come to us if you'd like to understand how confidence has, has changed in your customer base as well. Well, and I, I think, Rich, you know, we're recording this on the day that um, Boris has announced a reduction in the social distancing rules in England, the, the meter plus. Yeah. Um, and, you know, that that is going to give... That's going to that's that's great, isn't it, from a from a business perspective, because we're going to get hospitality back. And I have missed the pub, Rich. I've got to tell you, <laughs> I have missed the pub. So I can't wait to go, even if I go and have a social distance. Pint, well, I might even drive up and have a social distance and pint with you in, in Salisbury. Oh, right again. The, the point is, is people will want to get back, but they'll want to do it in a really, really safe way. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, the way they plan that, it's uh, uh, the way Robert's planned that in the organisation, I think, is, is 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 crucial. But what today's announcement talks about is how dynamic a business has got to be to be able to change the reacting situations. Um, I was walking around Exeter City Centre on on Saturday, and I, and I saw these two metre sort of banners on the floor and you know signs everywhere, and it did strike me then. I'm thinking, God, if, if Boris changes his mind, yeah. the government changes his mind, which they've done. All yeah. that's got to be changed. So yeah. again, you know, the, you know, businesses are going to have to react to that really quickly because customers will expect them to do that. So, no, but a, a great wall. But I thought really great. And uh, what, what are we going to do next week? Then who are we talking? So to I reckon, week? I reckon for episode twelve, we might be going to speak to somebody from from a business improvement district. So I think Ooh. we'll find out uh, what's going on in their world, having uh, the the uh, the lockdown been lifting on non-essential uh, retail. So um, we'll have had probably two weeks worth of of shopping, uh, um, so to find out uh, how that's been impacted in the, in the bid in the town centres as well. So it'd be really interesting. So please do join us for that. Brilliant. Now remember, guys, we have had a thousand hours worth of views and like uh, views and, uh, and and listens, and we, we're really grateful for that. But we want even more people to listen to our war blend. So if you've enjoyed this, please like it, please share it, please comment on it. We'd really, really love to speak to more and more people so that they get the benefit of our warblings, even if it's just about soda. It's worth yeah, doing. Absolutely. We so please like, share and comment. Um, I've been Ryan Huxtable. I've been Richard Knight. And we'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>